Hi everyone and welcome back to episode number 5 of the Spring Boot Security course. In this episode we are going to learn about form-based authentication. Before we go to that, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Back to form-based security, let's try to give a good definition for it. Form-based security is the process of authenticating a user by presenting him with a custom page where he enters his credentials. Those credentials are then posted to your, your application as form data and your application is responsible for collecting them and performing the actual authentication process. So there are a couple of keywords here. The first one is custom HTML page. If you remember the previous episode, uh, when we are dealing with HTTP basic authentication, that login, you know, pop-up is displayed by the browser. It's handled by the protocol, by HTTP, and by the browser's implementation of that authentication method. Now, when we are dealing with form-based security, we need to create the HTML page for login. So that's why it's custom, because we need to develop it. Uh, another key point to take here is that our application is responsible for collecting the credentials and for performing the authentication process. So we cannot rely on the HTTP standard to do that for us, but we need to write code and logic that will um, you know, make this aut authentication process work. Okay, so these are the main uh, characteristics of form-based authentication. Now that we know the definition, let's try and see the flow. So how would login work? Well, we have you know, a user, a client, and we have our web application hosted on a server, and we're trying to access this resource, okay, home. And because we are not authenticated, the, user, the application will see that, and it will redirect us to a login page. And that login page you know, is a standard HTML form, uh, it's custom, so you can see even in this flow that uh, it's not a pop-up, the browsers appear. And now the user will enter his um, credentials, he will hit the login button, and then this form data is posted back to our application. And now, if the credentials are correct, then a new session is going to be created you know, by our web, by our web application, and that session will have a unique session ID. Uh, and the server <coughs> will respond to our client okay, with an okay response if the, um, auto, if the authentication phase uh, succeeded. And also the server will send back a cookie containing the new session ID that was just created. Okay, so a couple of minutes pass by, and then uh, our client sends another request to the server to gather all the reports. And because we have a cookie now, the client also sends the authentication cookie back to the server. Now, the authentication cookie contains the session ID. That session ID from the client is checked against uh, the actual list of uh, still valid IDs on the server. And if it's not expired, then uh, sorry, the server will respond back with an OK message. So this is how form-based authentication works by using sessions and cookies. Um, unlike the HTTP basic authentication, we can implement logout in form-based authentication. Okay, we have our user which is logged in, and let's say that you know he wants to log out, so he can, so he sends you know a request to log out the session is invalidated on the server and then you know the server re redirects the user back to the login page and then the whole process you know repeats itself uh, do note that the exact same process happens when the session expires so by default sessions are not kept indefinitely they are they expire after a period of time you know i think a default is about 30 minutes and after 30 minutes of inactivity you know the session gets invalidated automatically and then when the user tries to log in even if he has the cookie even if he presents uh, it to the server that id no longer exists and then he's re redirected back to the login page okay so these are the login logout flows when dealing with form-based authentication there are a couple of things that you also need to be aware of uh, the first one is that like i said 
our application is responsible for dealing with firm data and for performing the actual authorization phase. Now, as you saw, the process is a little bit more complicated than with HTTP basic, but you don't have to worry too much about it because you know Spring Security handles most of these things for us. So you'll see that Spring Security handles sessions, uh, handles the cookie phase. Uh, you know, the infrastructure is kind of stripped away by the framework. So you won't have to do all of these things yourself and to repeat them over and over again. But I think it's important to be aware of what's happening under the hood in order to understand this whole mechanism. Um, it is the most widespread form of authentication. I mean, uh, I think a large percentage of the apps today you know, use some sort of form-based authentication and it's very well suited for self-contained applications, you know. Um, it's important to know that the credentials are conveyed in clear text when you log in. So it's mandatory that you use SSL and HTTPS to keep them safe in transit. And I cannot emphasize this enough. No security uh, is, you know, safe unless you have uh, SSL. So if you're implementing this application and you add security and you add form authentication or basic or tokens, if you're not using uh, SSL, then those credentials and that data that is in transit can be easily intercepted and decoded. So please do use SSL with this method of authentication in order to keep your data safe. Uh, again, this technique is quite fishable. Um, well, you can imagine that a user, uh, that a malicious user, you know, could copy your custom HTML form. He can create a fake site. The login form will look uh, identical to your own and he will try to re redirect users to his fake login form. Um, you know, a fooled user will enter his username and password, the malicious user will intercept them and then you know that's bad. Well it's not much that you can do to prevent this because you cannot prevent what a user uh, does but you can minimize you can minimize the risk by using SSL and certificates from trusted organizations because if you use them when the user navigates to your site then you know in, in the um, in the URL bar of your browser you know a green icon appears certifying that your application is what it says it is so you can minimize the risk by using uh, certificates from trusted organizations and one thing that you need to be aware of is that this method of authentication is not suited for public REST endpoints. So uh, if you're building a self-contained application that has everything it needs for the user, so it's like a single entry point for the user and then your user has everything it needs inside that application, then form-based out is perfect. Uh, if you're just trying to build some public endpoints and then have multiple customers connect to them, like you know mobile apps, desktop apps, uh, uh, web apps uh, or even expose them to third-party customers uh, then this method of security is not exactly suited for that. Uh, in this case you'll probably need some sort of token-based authentication which we'll discuss about in a future episode. Cool, so if you have to draw a line I would say that form-based out is the most used method for authorizing users and it works like a charm for self-contained uh, apps. Um, if you're a developer for, you know, even for a short period of time, then I think you most likely used this method of authentication in your web applications. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.